Oh, hello. Sorry, I was just applying some deep woods off to keep the rest of 2020 away from me. Welcome to 2021. Yes, indeed. This is Horror Vision 2020. Do we need to change our name? I do not know. We'll talk about it. But 2020 was pretty horrific, so we'll probably stick with it. In 2020 hindsight vision, you know, that's what it meant originally. We did this before 2020. This fantastic year that has passed us by in the blink of an eye, sort of. I want to apologize to some of the guests that we shot this summer because we had other projects and 2020 took hold and there's some other things. We got sidetracked and we backlogged so many interviews that a few of you are still straggling and getting there and we're, and we're uh, getting on this stuff right now. So, and, and, and in a, we were very fortunate to have a midsummer rendezvous with a very talented actor producer out of the UK. He was a lot of fun, super cool dude. You know, it's like his stories were fantastic. Um, he started off, I mean, like he, award-winning actor. He won, I think, in Great Expectations. He played Pip and he won Actor of the Year. And he was doing theater uh, in the UK when, when Clive Barker found him uh, doing a play, a King, King Lear play. And he's like, yo, dude, you want to drop it all and do fringe theater with me and they like traveled around making no money but he was writing some crazy crazy stuff screenplays and out of that came hellraiser which uh this gentleman is known for in the horror world with us is the uh butterball centibite with one and two um he has some pretty cool stories about that uh as well as nightbreed you know him and clive they've, they've been friends over the years he has nothing but good things to say which is awesome um um, he has a, a series on Amazon right now, which is totally worth the watch. It's called Dark Ditties. It is fantastic. It is a six-part uh, series. I think the sixth one just came out or is coming out. But uh, he he's an actor and a producer on that. And, you know, it's kind of like individual stories, but they all tie in together for the long one. It's, it's pretty cool. Kind of Dark Tower-ish, I guess you could say. I said it in there. If you tune in, check it out. He has a couple other movies that he wants to promote, which are uh, You Are My Sunshine, which uh, should be out now, and then also Starfish, which he played on. Ooh, another one you guys should check out is uh, The Haunting of Margam Castle. Of course, it's a, a scary movie, so I think we know that explains itself. Haunting of Margam Castle. Tune in to that one. Check everything out, and I want you guys to follow him. I think he's got a lot of great stuff coming up in, in 2021. So let's get to it with, to us, the very nightly, Mr. Simon Bamford. Ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. No, turn him on. Don't turn him off. Let's get to it right now. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, okay. no, good, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Welcome. I remember you from our show, uh, Motor City Nightmares. <laughs> I'm so sorry about last week or the week before. Oh, don't worry about it. It was terrible. The, the toothache was just unbelievable. Uh, are you better now? <laughs> uh, yeah, the tooth's still in there because the dentist is still shut, kind of uh, major right. surgery. Um, yeah, so it's not hurting anymore. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome so, to our Horror Vision 2020. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is uh, my co-host, Jim Lewis. Hello, Hi, hello. Jim. Yep, yep, yep. So Barbie, she has nothing but great stuff to talk to you, talk about you. <laughs> She's like... Oh, yeah. It's, she, all, it's all lies. She, <laughs> it's all lies. <laughs> well, well, we'll tell her you said nothing but great things to say about her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, how did you get involved in the business first before we talk about the scary? Oh, the business. I, I, I when I was kind of yay high, um, um, my um, primary school headmaster was really into doing school plays, and uh, so that's how I kind of got into it. I did school plays. I decided I really liked standing on stage and people applauding me, and that's <laughs> kind of you know, yeah, you know. Nothing's Nothing to do with arts or horror or anything. It's just, it's really nice to, to be applauded and appreciated in life. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's, that's awesome. That's so, why I got into it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and me, I, I just like to watch from behind the scenes my, my art working. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get involved with the first, the Hellraiser with Clive? 
So um, I was at drama school with Nick Vince, who played Chatter in Hellraiser. And um, living around the corner or close by was Clive Barker, who was um, an unemployed um, actor and director and writer, um, who just moved down from Liverpool with some of his friends, including Doug Bradley. Wow. And they were running um, a fringe this company. And they came to see one of my um, productions at drama school called King Lear um, and uh, really liked what I was doing and asked me if I'd uh, join the French theatre company when I graduated, which I did. Um, and that's how I got to know them, got to know them all. So, yeah, I've known them 40 years now. Which is, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's, <a long> time. <laughs> that's amazing. So how did you actually go about getting the role in Hellraiser? Well, we, we did a lot of French theatre, so we went um, all over the world. We did a lot of stuff in London and Germany. What and is, fringe, is it fringe theatre, you said? Fringe, yeah. yeah. So basically, it's unpaid theatre. It's all theatre. We were all on the dole. We were all getting benefits, um, but trying to practice our arts. And then the stuff Clive was doing was amazing, even back then. Right. Um, but it wasn't making us any money. And, and officially, we were profit share which meant any profits we made, um, we shared, but uh, the profit <laughs> always went back into the next piece that Clive would write would need. Um, for example, he, he, he did one called uh, Frankenstein in Love, which funnily enough had a skinned man in it. <laughs> so, uh, so that's all, he, all, a lot of his ideas came from the stuff he was doing at that time. Um, so then we had to make a whole skinned bodysuit um, and that was worn by the guy, um, uh, an actor called Oliver Parker, and director called Oliver Parker, who played the removal men in Hellraiser 1 and 2. And um, the guy in Nightbreed with all the, the, the kind of like dreadlock Oh, stuff. yeah, Peliquid. Was it Peliquid? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a huge Nightbreed fan, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, uh, Oliver's a fantastic director, so he's, he's, he's directed a lot of uh, films too um but anyway we weren't making any money and um you get to a stage where you know you need to earn a living and so <laughs> after a couple of years of touring we we disbanded the company and i hadn't seen anybody for a couple of years i went away i was quite busy doing theater and i rang clive just out of the blue to see what he was up to and in the meantime he'd had his first publishing um deal so um the books of blood came out uh, he had a big kind of party to celebrate the launch of them which we all went to and uh, he gave away these, um, these packs and each one had its own individual uh, drawing in it that he'd done um, and all the books and stuff. And I've still got it somewhere. I had the, I had the drawing framed recently. Wow. Uh, that was cool. Um, but then I rang him two years after to see what he was up to. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm just about to do a, a film. He just had um, Rawhead Rex and I can never remember the other film made into uh, he, he'd written the screenplays for them and they'd be made into movies, yeah. but they hadn't been very successful. He wasn't very happy with the way they'd, they'd done them. So he persuaded the film company to let him write and direct the next one. And he said, so I'm just about to do this. Do you want to, do you want to play a monster for me? And this was just over the phone. Okay. And I went, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Thinking, you know, you know, it'd be a few weeks work and that'll be it. And that was Hellraiser. So, <laughs> yeah. How many? Was it just a few weeks work? Was it a yeah. few Well, no, you can still work with <laughs> Exactly. It's still, it's still getting me work. Still, yeah. know, years right? later. Yeah. But were you, were you in more than one Hellraiser? I did the first two, yeah. Um, I played Butterball in the, uh, the big fat um, slobby one with the uh, dark glasses. Can you tell yeah. me about that character? Um, well, originally I had dialogue, so uh, that was quite exciting. So there were three of us. <laughs> That were the kind of high priests and there was um, Nick's character that was Chatter that was supposed to be like the dog of the three of us yeah. so but we were the high priests so the three of us had equal amount now um, Doug had more dialogue <laughs> but um, <laughs> once they put all the makeup on I got to my scene because the, the 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 mask was two inches thick yeah. the foam latex was what they used in those days and then they had these dentures made of these really rotten horrible gross teeth that kind of fitted on top of my own teeth and glued on but once those were in, I couldn't actually close my mouth. And all my um, dialogue had um, plosives. So it was perhaps we prefer you or impossible. And you can't say P's or B's if you can't <laughs> put your lips together. Yeah. So it got to my first day on set with dialogue. And I went, I can't hear. What? <laughs> I can't hear. 
the hat we could hear you. The hat we can hear you. It's horrible. So there was this silence for a while, and then they all went, went in a huddle and had a chat. And and the the the, the um the funding on the film was was terrible. I think the original funding was seven hundred thousand pounds. It was nothing. Um, and I think it might even be three hundred thousand pounds. It was. It really was very very low when we started out. Um, and um, so they went away in this huddle, and they said, "Oh, well, we could dub it in post," but they said, "Well, we're, we're hoping not to have to do any post." and we're not sure we have the budget to go and do ADR dubbing. So, uh, so they said, okay, we're going to take all his lines and give them to the female center uh, So uh, I lost all my dialogue. Uh, <laughs> so sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you. I was really upset. Okay. Hey, I was really upset. Yeah, but you're still one of the OGs, right? Original gangster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's cool. So what, go ahead, you go. Oh, I was going to say, you've worked with him on uh, uh, another film, too. You worked with him on Nightbreed, right? And, Nightbreed. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about yeah. that. It's my favorite. Cabal's my favorite book. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Nightbreed, thankfully. Um, so, we, we did Hellraiser one year. Then the next year, they did Hellbound. And then the next year, they did Nightbreed. And so, we kind of, and it was the same kind of cast, a lot of the same cast, pretty much all the same crew. We moved from a very small production village for Hellraiser to Pinewood Studios for... Um, no, yeah, yeah, Pinewood Studios for um, Hellraiser, to, Hellraiser 2 and then Night Breeze. And so I was sitting waiting for my phone call because I, I knew that they were in production, pre-production for it. And uh, I was getting closer and closer and I, I, I ended up um, ringing Nick and said, so have you heard anything about the casting on Night Breeze? And he said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm cast. I've got my contracts and everything. So I rang Doug and he went, yeah, I cast. So, oh, what? What's going on? So um, I rang Clive and it turned out that he had written me a part, but then the studios had got, oh, I can't remember the name, guy's name, had got this singer, oh, Mark Almond, had, had managed to get this singer, Mark Almond, who was very big in the 90s, mm -hmm. and they wanted him to play the part that Clive had written for me. So I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I was pretty gutted. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, Mark Almond at that time was just signing with Sony Records, and they wanted his. They wanted to change his image because he was a bit punk back then, and they wanted to make him more into a crooner and more of a kind of soft image. And up until then, of course, all anybody knew about Clive Barker was Hellraisers, so yeah. kind of really kind of quite um, dark, <laughs> yeah, aggressive, yep. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they didn't, Sony Records didn't think this was the great image for uh, Mark Olmert at the time. So he pulled out. Yay! And uh, I got my part back. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah um, and of course, uh, compared to Hellraiser, not having to wear all that makeup every day and not having to get, because to get to the studios from where I live was taking me kind of two hours. So I was getting up at four in the morning, three, four in the morning, not getting home till eight, nine at night. Um, so, but with uh, Nightbreed, I didn't really have any makeup at all. I had prosthetic nipples because they ripped the nipple out my, the uh, metal out my um, yeah. chest. You're a crazy was... one, right? That, I remember that. Yeah. Do you have they, uh, oh, Naka, right? Oh, Naka. Days, they're much better these days with stencils. They can do stencils, tattoos, which yeah. uh, look just like a real thing. But back then, um, every day I did have to go in, they had to draw them on, hand draw them on, all the uh, tattoos on my arms. And then they had this stuff called plastic skin, which kind of seals them to your mm -hmm. skin for the day. But there was one day when they got the images the wrong way around. So I had uh, the right hand tattoos on my left hand and the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> is that in a film like that? Like, is it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a question too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're paying close attention, like you can see, like, hey, those tattoos are different. Yeah, yeah, swapped over. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. So what have you been doing during quarantine? Um, what have I been doing? So I've been doing a lot of gardening. So um, <laughs> I, I, uh, what, one of the conventions in Germany I met, I got quite friendly with Robert England's wife, oh. Nancy. Yeah. And she's just the nice, I don't know if you've come across her, she's the nicest lady. Oh, Kevin, but but no, she's really into, she's funny, really into her name, It's funny her name is Nancy though, because yeah. it, it's the, the name of the girl. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I've met Robert before, but never his wife. So <laughs> it's lovely. We went jogging in Germany, and we were started talking about gardening. Yeah. And, um, she, she's a real keen gardener and she'd done this amazing kind of um, Neptune inspired garden. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of gardening here and I was hoping a few scripts might turn up so I could learn some dialogue, but yeah. they kind of haven't happened. So I've been trying to do a bit of wheeler dealing behind the scenes as well, because I've been, I've been doing a little bit of um, producing on a few projects. So yeah. trying to push those forward. And just actually just today, um, Something's come through that we filmed the end of last year called The Haunting of Margam Castle, Ooh. which okay. is uh, North Bank Entertainment. It's about a group of parapsychologists from the States who come over to Wales to um, the most haunted castle in Wales. And, uh, and uh, well, you can kind of guess what yeah. happens. <laughs> is it out, it's, but, it's out on video now? Or no, is it it's... It's due for release in, it's the, they've um, finalized the re, um, US release, which is 1st of September, okay. and be in October in the UK, here in the UK, so. Okay. Yeah, everything's moving slow these days. Very slow, yeah. yeah I know. We'll definitely it's, throw that in the opening yeah. pitches. We'll put it in the opening, and we can always come back around and do another interview with you to promote. Okay. Cool. Do, that would be yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah. Like in September, we'll we'll reach out to you again. Yeah, or, or you reach out to us and say, "Hey, I got I, something to promote. Let's do it." I, I've only got. I have to say, I've only got the tiniest cameo role in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's all right. um, are all things right. are things opening back up there, or is it still kind of slow? No, no theater or anything, right? Because I know you're big no, in theater. Um, they're just they are opening stuff back up. I think um, this weekend. Uh, bars, pubs are opening up, um, and cinemas are opening up, but only to a certain capacity. But theatres and live entertainment, theatres can open, but not with live entertainment, oh. um, and concerts can't open up. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, we're gradually getting back there. It's been so peculiar, though. I have to say, and this is terribly wrong, but I've really rather enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been. A, you know what? To a point, so have we. <laughs> It's been like a kind of trial retirement, you know. I'm I'm gonna look quite a long way in retirement, but I've 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 had a few. I've had a job kind of helping out, um, anyway, which I've been doing a week and a half, a day and a half every week. So just kind of helping out with the kind of whole COVID thing. So that's kind of kept me sane. Yep. For the weekends and then, but having five days a week off is really quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I could just about manage, just about manage financially. <laughs> <laughs> just barely, barely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like those five days a week, but then imagine like, then, then you got to take it when it's post-COVID, when everything's kind of done and it's five days a week and you have things to do, like yeah. go to a pub, go to a restaurant, <laughs> yeah. go to see yeah. a movie or watch a play. And, oh, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I don't think I'm going to rush back to go to a restaurant or go to a pub. Yeah. I don't think it's quite... Until there's a vaccine, I don't feel very safe with it. Well, yeah. Well, they, well, they just closed everything back down here in Los Angeles. Uh huh. So oh, right. Not everything. Oh. At least all the, they're gonna probably close everything. But right now, all of the bars have got closed again, and beaches. I knew I knew Texas had, and a few, and uh, Nevada. Had, oh no, Nevada was Arizona. Was to Arizona. 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 Yeah. So, uh, what do you guys think about us with the response here? Do you guys? Worry about us? Do you laugh at us? What is it? <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. That's a really difficult one to answer. <laughs> Do you laugh at us? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stupid Americans. Uh, I'll go back. Well, it's, you can really, get, really get into trouble with this. <laughs> no, no uh, I think we feel, I mean, personally, personally, I think. Uh, I think people feel that some states opened up way too early. Um, I mean, we feel that, that our country opened up way too early anyway. Compared to the rest of Europe, we were opening up when the, the rates were much higher. Yeah. Um, so far, it's been okay. But so many of, the, of your states were, were keen to open. And it seemed a little bit narrow-minded because you know, they were opening for financial reasons. Oh. And it's gonna bite them in the bum, and it's gonna be even worse financially. It's worse, right? It's gonna be yeah. worse. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you can understand well, today, well, the today reason. Was, today, even though this isn't going to uh, air for a couple of weeks, today was the day that we found out we were banned from the EU. <laughs> we can't oh, travel yeah. there. No American can travel over there. <laughs> oh. Well, if, it, if it's any consolation, I'm still banned from going there too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just before everything went wild. I was supposed to do a, a convention, the Days of the Dead convention in yeah. Los Angeles, in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. And a few days before, I think like two days before I flew, Trump announced that he was going to ban anybody from Europe or from the UK. I think they'd already yeah. shut from Europe. And then that was moved to June, and now it's been moved to October. So I don't know, watch that space whether that's going to happen. But we seem to be getting fast close to October, and yeah. things don't yeah. look good. Don't look good. Yeah. They're not good here. Don't come here anyway. <laughs> uh, was there anything like in the works, like not just the festival? Was there any projects that like got put on hold or canceled that you were going to be up for or ready to do? Um, there was the one, one of the Doc Ditties. So I've been doing a TV series called Doc Ditties, which is on Amazon Prime. Oh, yep. oh what's it called? Dark Ditties. Uh, dark, dark Ditties dark with the <laughs> Yep. Okay, we'll put that <laughs> it's a bit like Black Mirror meets um, The Twilight Zone. Um, oh, Black Mirror very, meets like The Twilight Zone. So that's cool. but, yeah, yeah, very, very British. Um, <laughs> so each each episode is a completely standalone story, but as each one goes along, you realise that they are actually strangely interlinked. Okay. Um, and there's kind of Easter eggs in all of them that kind of points to other other episodes oh, um, I so love, horror fans love that that's like a fun little puzzle for us you know <laughs> it sounds very stephen king stephen king ash yeah. you know like each book yeah. kind of points towards like rolling in the, dark, in the dark tower or something you know that's cool the, the great thing for us is that it's been um we've all uh had a chance to play different characters that we would never be asked to play because these days they very much ask you to play um your type of who you are right um, so in episode one, I played, um, oh, in episode one also, Barbie was in episode one. Oh. Um, Nick, Nick Vince the Chatter was in episode one. Um, Kenneth Cranham from um, Hellraiser 2 played the, the the guy with the thing coming out of his head. Yeah, yeah, that guy, yeah. Like <laughs> and Oliver Smith, who played the skin man in the first two Hellraiser movies. So there were loads, there were five of us from Hellraiser in the first episode, which was called That's The Offer. And I played a, an investment banker that was, um, the, the first episode is a little bit like uh, Agatha Christie meets Saw. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> we are so going to have to watch that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And episode two, I got to play the same investment banker, but earlier in his career, so it was in the previous timeline, where uh -huh. he was um, an estate agent or uh, a, a real estate agent, they call him over there. Uh, but also, that was a small part in it, but I also got to play... That was called Mrs. Wiltshire, and it was about this old, old lady who was trapped in her house by the spirit of her abusive husband. Oh, that was so <laughs> sucks. So it's very dark material, <laughs> yeah. but I got to play the old lady, so. Oh, that's cool. No, that's yeah, cool. so that's I got cool. to play Mrs. Wiltshire and the real estate agent. Um, so that was really, really uh, fun to play. I had a prosthetic um, head on. They, they took pictures from my grandmother's uh, the 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 guy who did this prosthetics, um, he worked on Hellraiser and um, Nightbreed and lots and lots of amazing stuff. Um, so they took yeah they they took pictures of that so that they got kind of my bone structure, and they, they looked at what my grandmother's looked at like and then kind of molded a mixture of I look very much like one of my grandmothers in it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> and and it's not so it's a it's, it's very strange it's a strange concept. And it's not like a man playing a woman, it is actually a woman. So I said, it's little Mary. Oh, very lovely. Oh, Tommy, it's lovely to be here. I love the wall behind you. Isn't that nice? Got the full in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm sure, yeah, with, with, the, with the prosthetic sign. Uh, yeah. Probably more normal. <laughs> that was awesome, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tommy's background matches her hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's very rainbow. Yeah, which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
yeah, so I, so then I got to play this old lady. So that one was called Mrs. Wiltshire. Then number three, um, I, because that was a huge part, because um, basically it was nearly pretty much this one woman talking to camera about pretty much the whole time with a few other characters coming in and out. So yeah. it was an enormous role. So I said, look, on number three, would you mind giving me slightly something slightly smaller? So they gave me a tiny, tiny role. I wish oh, I could ask them. Careful what you ask for. I, I played um, uh, an accountant who'd stolen from um, the mob from organized crime. Uh, so that was called Finders Keepers. And then number four, <sighs> number four was called The Witching Hour. And I played a really creepy kind of groundsman in the grounds of this incredible stately home. We, we filmed a lot of them in this stately home in Lincolnshire here in, the, in England. And uh, uh, yeah, so I played this really sinister. So that was nice, nice playing baddies. He was nice to start with. And then he just, uh, you see, I realized there's something going on. And then number five, which we finished filming, but hasn't been released yet, which is called Dad. That sat way, set way in the future, and there's been a big zombie apocalypse has oh, happened in the world that has kind of been happening in the first four, but you don't really know it's been happening. Um, and then you kind of look back from the future and realize that, oh, that meant that, and that linked with that, and that, oh, that's why that's happening there. And the dead, then, yeah. who's this that's pretty cool, character? though. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that one, so I, I've seen a few scenes from that. Looks pretty good. Good. Okay. Wow, you've been, that's busy. You've been doing a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. So, all, so that dad's coming out. Um, I don't know uh, what's happening with number six. Yeah, but number six is the uh, the series finale. So, yeah. so, so I was hoping that number six script might come through, but it hasn't done. But, uh, but so, are filming there again? Like, is are the studios opening up? It's. I think some of the soap operas have started up again. Um, it's kind of weird to see the way they're doing it, you know, because the actors can't be together. And then if they are close, they need to be facing away from each other. And then the crew are kind of miles away from them. And wow. the scenes are having to be written, you know, so that there's no kind of touching or face to face. Uh, yeah. Weird. We, uh, uh, the, yeah, quick, because our, so I think, I don't, I don't know if it was, I think my Days of Our Lives are both the beautiful, tried opening back up and they were shooting things and they actually had to bring in like married couples to do hands holding like holding hands yeah i was told i don't i didn't i don't know how it would even work but they had a blow-up doll for a love scene and i'm like <laughs> how is that even possible why even bother <laughs> and like every and they're trying different camera angles so they could film people even though they're six feet apart and they're like we can't work like this let's shut it down and try to figure it out again because <laughs> you see because that's going to end up looking like the hobbit isn't it you know how that <laughs> is. perspective of you're gonna have this really big person here, and then this tiny person speaking from there. <laughs> I just, I mean, it's gonna, yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, they tr people are trying, but anything union is gonna be really tough to shoot because of the rules and regulations. I think. Yeah, a, a lot of the casting calls over here have been like, like you say, for couples or families, um, yep. so that they can work together, um, yep. and it's safe for them to do so. So I think. Um, we were hoping on the Dark Ditties, because I'm one of the um, exec producers on that, but we were hoping that that might put us an advantage having a series that's nearly finished when there's going to be a big gap, then they're going to run out. But it doesn't seem at the moment to be working like that. And talking to a friend of mine who, who knows more about the TV industry, he said the trouble with it is, is that all these amazing writers have suddenly had loads and loads of time to sit at home, sit at home and write. And what's going to happen and what's beginning to happen is these incredible scripts are being sent forward. And so unless, and unless you're really, really excellent in what you're putting forward, you're not going to stand a chance. He said there's going to be a period, there's going to be a gap, and then there's going to be a period of just absolutely fantastic dramas. And I'm excited and, for that. <laughs> yeah, because people have had time to sit at home and, and work through it and rewrite it. And, that means you know. the entertainment industry won't suffer like other industries are gonna after this. Well, I don't know. I mean, theaters are, uh, are really struggling. I, I hear today Cirque du Soleil has gone under. That's terrible. Oh, really? really? I didn't even yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Really, really. That's a worldwide business, isn't it? You know, and yeah. it's, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's terrible news. And and I think one of the problems with theater and things like that is 
I, I lead, like they're saying like because you, you're yelling you're projecting your voice so like that's spreading it like you know I mean eventually at some point we're gonna no, no matter what whether there's a vaccine or not I'm sure the world will just have to be like oh, we can't live in fear anymore it's gonna be a long time but yeah. and I'm well, sure there's gonna be a vaccine like air but that people can... like theater and you know, like all that stuff is like ah oh, people are thriving for it and like Cirque du Soleil going under is awful like that's yeah. That's like such a positive group. You know what I mean? There's just oh, so it much is beauty, and, and it's love that. You know? And it's because of what they've done over the years. They've created this amazing excellence. Yes. Yeah. Um, an excellence. And they've allowed excellence to develop amongst the the performers. Yeah. Um, and without that kind of um, backup for the performers to keep growing and keep trying stuff out, and um, what are they going to do? Right. There's so there's so many. You're right. There's a lot because we're um, too close to Vegas too. It's the same. You know. The, you were saying about the 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 way that the actors project. One one of the rules over here in the UK for bars opening is that um, the music has to be really quiet because to stop people shouting. Because again, if you're if you're shouting to be heard, then you're projecting your voice. Yep. So there's going to be noise police in the bars, which is going to be that's, yeah. That's uh, same the same rules in effect here, and that's why yeah. and that's why bars I'm... bars that have live music. Well, I mean they're all shut down again now, but like any bars with live music wasn't well they weren't being able to open things like that, and like the music has to stay low, so like the server doesn't have to project the voice. You're not yelling across the bar to somebody. Yeah, but, and that's, <laughs> that's fine. Fun, that's fine until. until... The, the the English are terrible with their bars anyway. You know, we drink to excess <laughs> until, until we can't stand out, by which time everybody's shouting at each other anyway and, and kind of <laughs> hanging off, hanging off each other. So <laughs> they, they're, they're calling, the police are calling this Super Saturday that's coming up because oh. they're really critical that they opened all the bars on a Saturday, you know, of all nights. Oh. If they could have opened the midweek, then they could have gradually built up yeah. on a Saturday. Yeah. The police are really worried about what's going to happen. Well, we have a big <laughs> holiday coming up here, of course, the 4th of July. It's oh, yeah, yeah. Independence Day, so it is, people are, you know, split down the middle, you know, what, what yep. they should do, where should we go, what, you know, because 4th of July, everybody wants to go outside, but they're telling yeah. you, nobody go outside, you know. <laughs> well, I wonder how that's going to go down, because they, like, they put the pretty much mandatory stay-at-home order again, for the most part. Are people going to listen here in the States? Probably not. Yeah, yeah. The same because here. I don't know if you saw the, the pit sorry. I don't know if you saw the pictures of our beaches. Yeah, over I here. did. Just like ours. They're just like ours. So people are the same all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think you know, because our beaches opened a few weeks ago and we were thinking, oh don't go to the beaches now because everybody will be going to the beaches. And uh, I said, Oh, should we you know, we could go to the beach maybe midweek now that it had been open for a few weeks, maybe it's quietened down, but obviously it hadn't done at all. Um, Nobody wearing it's, masks. It was it's scary, you know. At least you're on the west west coast. Yeah. Of the states, so you've got a kind of good weather all year round. Yeah. Once, yeah. Um, we, we've been kind of lucky here that it started in our spring, and has so far gone through the summer. But they're talking about the second wave in the winter, and I can't imagine how that's going to work with everybody locked inside their houses, with the heating turned up and the snow coming down. It's just the. Uh, yep. Right. Been to be able to go into they deliver liquor here, so I'm sure they get <laughs> so everyone will be fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know what, what? One of the great things has been the creativity that's come out of it. You know, I, I saw last true. night the, the Lord of the Rings cast for reenacting Lord of the Rings on I Zoom. Saw that. <laughs> I know that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I know. But yeah, we we were going to do this before. Um, the COVID broke out, we were going to create a whole online uh, convention that uh -huh. we we're going towards. And when this happened, we're like, let's just, just do it and give it away because everybody needs this right now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's why we're interviewing just everybody, all kinds of people. So thank you so much for this. This has been so awesome. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and to give us a peek of, you know, what you guys kind of think of us over there. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we don't. We don't. I no. think. I understand. I think we, I know. We're very supportive. No, we're very supportive of, of half of you. No, half of you. Maybe more than half of you now. Um, and a little bit worried about the other half. Yes, yeah. the other half scared. So are we. So are we. Don't you worry. 
yeah. but to be honest that's that's been the case for a long time i remember um being over there and touring around the states doing various conventions when george bush was um up for re-election and i didn't meet anybody and when i was going around los, los angeles and all the airports and everywhere else i didn't meet a single person that was going to vote for him and then I saw when I got home that he got in and I said to my friends in the state, how did that happen? How did it get in? He said, because you were traveling. The people that travel would vote, wouldn't vote for him. And the people that don't travel and kind of oh, stay God. in their state and don't move, they voted for him. And I think that's kind of yeah. you know, still going on. To yeah. A point. yeah. And then our crazy electoral college. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that'll change? I'm hoping. I don't know. We'll just see. I just want, I just want some kind of peace to happen. I don't know what. I'm just going to wait and see and, you know, do our- Well, no matter, no matter what, if, like, so I think, let's say that he, you know, he gets reelected again, which is very likely to happen. At least that's four years that he can't, so it's going to be like, he can't get another term. So like that's a good thing, and I think hopefully with that being said, there can be more we'll unity. Survive. I don't think we'll survive as a country. <laughs> I, I think, think there, no matter what, there's going to be more unity in the following years to after, come. Right, no matter what, gone, when he's gone, I, I think. I think it's interesting that he doesn't seem to have any policies. But he, he just wants he wants it for its own sake, for because it's a goal to win. You know, want that. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I think if he does get in for four years, do you not think he will change like Putin will change the change oh, the boundaries? Oh yeah, he'll change the boundaries. <laughs> oh, sure I mean if he if he does, <laughs> I'm coming to move in with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll We're coming to <laughs> visit <there>. I'm, <laughs> I'm you know, jumping across the four pond. Years. We'll just be there four years. We'll be done. <laughs> I, I would be careful. I would maybe look at the rest of Europe rather than the UK. Okay. We, we, We've got our own idiots here as well. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> if I could move to the rest of another part of the UK, uh, Europe now, I, I would. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for your time. This has been great. <laughs> but is there anything else you would like to promote? Um, I think, oh, I've got a little list here. Oh, there's another film that is coming out, I don't know um, when, called Sunshine. Um, it was, when we were shooting it, it was called You Are My Sunshine, but I think I heard recently, it's um, just called Sunshine. I don't know when it's coming out. They filmed it over several years, so, um, but I'm thinking, they're hoping they're trying to get it out probably this year or next year, so. Awesome. Uh, I think that's everything that's, uh, and there's another film that's worth checking out, which I did a couple of years ago, with um, Tom Riley, who was in Da Vinci's Demons, Okay. One of the leads in that, and um, Joe Froggart, who was in Downton Abbey and has done loads and loads of stuff. And that was called Starfish. It's not horror, although it's kind of real life horror, I suppose. Um, <laughs> it's about a family that are torn apart by sepsis. So it's not it's not a laugh a minute. It's real life horror, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's a really good film. It's a really okay. powerful film. Starfish. Awesome. I love it. Good. Thank you so much for your time, and we will come back around and see you. Yep. In, yeah. In September. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come back at the beginning of September, because I will. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to see it as well. But like I say, it's only a tiny, tiny. I played the Witchfinder General, so there you go. Okay. The Witchfinder General. That's a good role. <laughs> yeah. Either way, no matter what, it's like yeah. Right, there's going to be price, stuff. To, right? There's going to be more stuff to talk about, no matter what. Yep. Yeah. You know, see see what's happened over there and what starts opening up you know it's always fun to come back and talk to you we really i really appreciate you talking to us today thank you so much thanks Simon. Uh, Bob, bobby said it was good fun so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know when this goes up yep okay cool. uh, i'll tag you on all the social media stuff okay lovely, lovely. Okay. thank you bye guys bye. thanks <laughs>